You guys ready to do this? What's up, Packer fans? I'm Nariah Chapik, host of Portland Packers Podcast. Thank you for being here. Thank you for checking out the video. Thank you for coming back. It has been a couple of months, and my water heater has decided to heat up right now. But outside of that, things look a little bit different. Let's get the elephant out of the room. I have not gotten to the point of redesigning my studio set. I have a piano out. I turned this into a recording studio. The last few months have gone a little bit sideways not only in the in the uh uh the world itself but just from my own creative standpoint i want to make a little bit of music uh put the packers news on hold uh and uh you know kind of relax and I, I got away from it and i wanted my my subscribers for the most part they i actually gained a couple f for a while there and then it's slowly been starting to drop it's like people are craving this packer news so i figured I, I had to i had to put some content out there because i'm at uh 901 at the time of filming this and if i'm going to drop below 900 i'm going to make sure i do it because uh you just don't like this content and you want to unsubscribe rather than uh by not posting any content so here we are we're here we're here we're doing this and the nfl draft is next weekend it's it's wow how is that even possible? I mean, it, it, to, to an extent, it's exciting. I mean, we're going to get some more football news, some more Packer news. We, but there's definitely a need for sports news in our life, um, given that the entire world has shut down thanks to good old COVID-19. But then on top of that, the NFL should be releasing their schedule. Probably, I mean, uh, historically, it has come out. Uh, if not by now, early next week, it should be released right before the NFL draft. So there's going to be a, a bunch of Packers news coming out. And I figured I would do a series of videos. I'm going to be posting some content a little bit more than once a week for the next two weeks as we cover the NFL draft, as we cover the, the schedule release. And as we are here right now, I want to break down the rosters, both offense and defense, heading into the NFL draft. It will give us a recap of where we stand heading into the draft, in my own personal opinion, on what perhaps I think we need to be focused on and where we need to uh, just kind of let things lay and move on. And there's no better place to start uh, when it comes to letting things just be as the quarterback, uh, the, the quarterback group that is the Aaron Rodgers spot, right? So uh, I'm going to break these down in two videos. The first video, this one that you were watching, now we're going to talk about offense. And I think on Monday, we will break down some of the defense. So when we talk about the quarterbacks, rumors and rumors and speculation, the, the age old debate right now is, do we go out there and draft ourselves a quarterback? We have three quarterbacks on our roster. Currently, we have Aaron Rodgers, Tim Boyle, Manny Wilkins. Of course, Tim Boyle was the backup, took over the spot from uh, Brent Hundley. And, uh, and he didn't, I mean, I've always been of the mindset that if Aaron Rodgers goes out, the, the season's over. The, if he gets a, a season-ending injury, the season's over. Maybe you can have a quarterback that can carry the team a little bit, but we don't have a, a Teddy Bridgewater scenario like they had down in New Orleans, New Orleans last season. And I don't think, I, I am going to stand by my personal opinion, and that's probably why you tune into this stuff is hear what I have to say about this, but I don't think that we need to go out there and draft a quarterback. I, I think that it is, this is the... Where I left off at the end of last season, I am right there still as we head into the 2020 season that the Packers are, are needing to go all in with this Packers roster. And the quarterback position is not an area that you need to be focused on right now. And I'm going to double down on that. So I'm going to give you guys some potential draft odds when we look at these position groups. For me, I think it's a 35% chance that the Packers will draft a quarterback in the upcoming draft next week. Uh, that number has slowly been rising because there were reports that um, the Packers have been uh, doing video conferences with uh, Jalen Hurts from Oklahoma and Jordan Love out of Utah. I know these are some uh, prospects that a lot of you Packer fans love, but I am just not of the mindset that the Packers need to go out there and draft a quarterback. When we look at Aaron Rodgers' contract, or we just look at his future in the NFL, we're going we're gonna to have Aaron Rodgers for four, five, six more years. And if you go out there and draft a quarterback right now, you are essentially, you're not even going to, you're going to have to either A, re-sign him 
to another contract before Rodgers retires, or B, you're ending up just going to trade him away anyway, and we were a, a game away from the Super Bowl last year. Don't focus your attention on the quarterback. That's my personal opinion. And let's not forget, every damn year, they, they talk about these quarterbacks that are going to be coming into the NFL and will be studs, and nine times out of ten, they end up to be flops. There will be more star quarterbacks next year. There will be more star quarterbacks the year after that. I don't think it's time to draft a quarterback. Stick with Aaron Rodgers. There are other holes on this team that we need to address. And let's move to the running back group. So four running backs currently sit on our roster as of right now. We have good old Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams, Dexter Williams, who we drafted last year in the 19 draft, and then Tyler Irvin, who was a free agent pickup that we got uh, late in the end of last season that really came along not only in some of the offensive capabilities that he was able to step in at when like Jamal Williams was down with injury but we looked at him as more of a special teams guy he really kind of rejuvenated that punt return uh, position that was an absolute drag for us and even stepped in there at kick return as well so we got four running backs and one thing that I have learned about Matt LaFleur and boy do I love saying his name uh, again it's been a while since that one's come off the tongue uh, but what we learned about Matt last season and his offseason is that he loves to have running backs on his roster. He loves to fill that depth chart with running backs. And I, I anticipate that we are going to want to add uh, another potential star or someone that could fill in outside of your Aaron Jones, Jamal Williams. Maybe Dexter will get more playing time and the offseason has been good to him. This is all a bunch of unknowns. So you have maybe something there. Maybe you have something in Tyler Irving, but I, I would not be surprised if the Packers go out there and draft themselves another running back. I, I think it's almost clear as day that that will be an option. The other th reason why I feel strongly about that is because you have Aaron Jones and Jamal Williams both coming up on their contract year. Both these guys were drafted in the same draft a couple years ago. So uh, I think it's very unlikely that the Packers will end up re-signing both these guys. I think if you had to pick one right, Aaron Jones is going to be that guy that the Packers bring back. Um, so my potential draft odds for the Packers taking a running back in this draft, I have it right around 60%. I think that they do have good depth if you're looking at the immediate future, if you're looking at this season. I like what we have with our four running backs, but I think it's uh, it's, it's going to be a, just a matter of time that uh, you know maybe later in the rounds they pick up a running back. Or maybe if a guy like Jonathan Taylor, and this is just a dream scenario, I'm going to have a couple of these throughout the videos. Um, if Jonathan Taylor from Wisconsin happens to fall into that number 30 pick, or uh, maybe he doesn't go that high, but he, they can maybe sneak up and get him in the second round as well. Um, that would be a running back that I would you know, be excited about that they can take early on in the draft. But I don't actually see them taking a running back, quite honestly, uh, in the very early rounds. I think this is more of like a, a, a late third, possibly a fourth or fifth round pick as far as what they do at running back. Tight ends, well, there's been a lot of change in that tight ends room. Uh, good old Jimmy Graham, as many of us predicted, and I think as a lot of the rumors were swirling uh, in some of my last videos, Jimmy Graham is gone, um, and it, it's not necessarily a sad thing that Jimmy Graham is gone, but it's more of a sad thing that he ended up at the Chicago Bears. Now, he goes to a division rival. He signs a two-year, $16 million deal with Chicago Bears. He has $9 million guaranteed, so Chicago, dumb. Uh, but outside of that, they have a no trade clause in his contract, and it's it's the second largest tight end deal of this offseason. So it, it's right behind uh, Austin Hooper, who got a deal, a, mas a massive deal from the Cleveland Browns. But I don't know what the Chicago Bears saw in Jimmy Graham the last couple seasons that he played in Green Bay. I think that, that that lure of Jimmy Graham back in his Saints days or more prominently in the Seattle Seahawks days is still boating well for him and his contract. I mean, kudos to you, Jimmy, for going out there and grabbing that contract, but there's no way on earth that it, the Packers were going to bring him back for another season. He did not justify his $10 million a year contract that uh, Green Bay was paying him. But they did decide to bring back Mercedes Lewis. I'm really excited about that pick, or not the pick, but the, the re-signing of Mercedes. Um not a ton of action last season, but he's one hell of a run blocker, especially when you have those running backs that we talked about previously. Uh, he makes up in the in the run blocking side of things, and maybe he'll become more of a target this season in the passing game. But we're going to be looking specifically at a guy like Jay Sternberger, Robert Tanyan, Evan Bayless, and even James Looney. That uh, rounds out the five tight ends that we currently have on our roster. Um, I, I don't see tight end as a major uh, area of focus heading into this draft. There's, um, there's a lot of holes throughout this team 
Uh, I'm foreshadowing a little bit, but I'm looking at you inside linebacker. I'm looking at you cornerback. I'm looking at you wide receiver. Um, I'm looking at you offensive lineman. I'm pretty sure those are the main four hot spots for me. Uh, I don't actually see Packers picking up a tight end. I think they're going to ride uh, what they have with Sternberger and Tanya, and then they have some veteran uh, capabilities with Lewis in the room. So I think that they will stick with that. Potential odds of drafting a a tight end, I have it at 15%. If there's anything that the Packers might do at tight end, there are some rumors swirling around that O.J. Howard might be on the trade block uh, for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is pretty surprising to me with Tom Brady coming to town. But the Packers have been brought up as one of those teams, and the Packers do have draft picks that they could you know, kind of give away to pick up a guy like O.J. Howard, and I would be perfectly fine with that. I think that he would bring a lot of skill. Uh, and and uh, we talk about like a, a Jared Cook type of tight end, just a big body guy that can catch. I would be okay with O.J. being brought into Green Bay. But I don't think that will happen. Eh? The last two positions in the offensive side of the ball are where I start to go into the need to draft players. And we're going to start with the one and only offensive line. So currently we have 12 players listed on the Packers roster at offensive line. Gone is good old Brian Bulaga, Iowa. Uh, Three-year, $30 million deal with the Los Angeles Chargers. And heading into 2019, I quite frankly thought it would be Bulaga's last season in Green Bay. I honestly thought it could potentially be his last season in the NFL. So kudos to him as well for going out there and getting a three-year, $30 million contract. Um, He started all 16 games um, uh, in Green Bay last season. He, He struggled with some injuries but managed to play through them. It was disappointing to see him go after the season that he had last year, but I think the writing was on the table. It had to happen. We move on. The Packers then bring in and sign a tackle in Rick Wagner. So this guy... He is coming into his eighth season in the NFL. He signed a two-year, $11 million contract, so that's much less than what uh, they would have had to pay a guy like Brian Bulaga. Wagner was a former Wisconsin Badgers lineman, which is kind of cool, and he was drafted in the fifth round back in 2013. So he spent his first four seasons in Baltimore where he was drafted, spent the last three seasons in uh, Detroit for the Lions, and it, it seems like this will be Wagner's job to lose as far as where he lines up on that depth chart. Um, But uh, it's not really a flashy pick. It's not someone that I I, I feel, I I just honestly don't know a whole lot about him. I don't know if he will be as dependable or as great of a lineman as you had from Bulaga. But we look at the rest of that roster, man, there's a lot of uh, offensive linemen, not so many tackles though. We look at tackles as uh, Alex Light, obviously David Bakhtiari on the opposite side. And then you have a guy like Billy Turner, who can kind of jump back and forth from guard to tackle, but I think his primary role is you want to play him on that right guard versus moving him out to tackle. The rest of the offensive line looks really good. I mean, you have Lane Taylor, Elton Jenkins, who had an awesome rookie year. Expect him to just jump out even more coming up. Uh, Lucas Patrick, Cole Madison, Corey Lindsley. There's some talent along this, and there's just these three other tackles that I don't even recognize their names on the roster right now. So this is an area that we got to start planning and looking forward to the future. I mean, we look at perhaps keeping our unrestricted free agent from last season, Jared Valdir. We picked him up uh, November 27th last season because Blaga did suffer an injury that looked like he would miss multiple time or multiple games, but he was able to play through that and come back. But I don't think Valdir, honestly, is going to want to come back for another full season in the NFL. Maybe he will. Maybe the paid check will kind of push him in the right direction with that one. But I have a hard time imagining that he will come back. I think that... um I think they went out and got Rick Wagner, and then I'm looking at you know going into the draft and possibly picking up an offensive lineman. Now the 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 offensive linemen in this draft are a plenty, for lack of a better term. I, I mean, I say potential draft odds of taking an offensive tackle is 100% in my own personal opinion. I think that they actually take an offensive tackle in round number one is how passionately I think that the Packers will do this. I, I think it will upset a lot of people out there that they're not getting a wide receiver in the first round, but I will I will ease some of your frustration on that in a second. Um, for sure, they take an offensive tackle somewhere between rounds one and three. And like I said, it's a deep offensive line draft. I think there is talent to get there. I think if you have Rick Wagner who can maybe take over that right tackle role for a season or you have someone that you can draft high enough that could fight Rick for that job um, I think that will bode well for the competition along that offensive line and obviously you need someone on that line that is going to be able to protect Aaron Rodgers and let Aaron Rodgers do what Aaron Rodgers does 
and then just hopefully go out there and win another Super Bowl. So that's the offensive line side. I expect offensive linemen to be drafted 100%. It's guaranteed. It's just when will that happen? Will it be the first round, second round, or third round? Let's move on to the topic that everybody seems to be talking about. And of course, we want to talk about is good old wide receivers. So before we talk about who they sign, let's give ourselves a moment of silence to Geronimo Allison, who is no longer a member of the Green Bay Packers. I was thinking about like editing a, like a memorial or a memoriam, mem- memorabilia, not memorabilia, something in there. I was going to put something in there for Geronimo, but he's long gone. He gone, and the Packers decided to bring in Devin Funches from uh, the good old, well, originally from the Carolina Panthers and then spent a season out in uh, Indianapolis with the Colts. So that this is a type of pick that I absolutely love. And, and there wasn't a whole lot of excitement, I think, in Packer Nation for picking up a guy like Funches. But he signs a one-year, $2.5 million prove-it deal. They don't have to pay him a ton of money. And compared to his one-year, $10 million deal that he signed with the Colts last season, I mean, this is an absolute potential steal for Green Bay and the rest of that roster. When you look at um, his season last year, he had that, uh, he went into week one, he ended up breaking his collarbone in week one. He sat out the rest of the season. He went to the injured reserve. So the Colts ended up obviously letting him go, decided not to resign them because they probably threw too much money at it. And like I said, I love this signing. It's an app. It's a low risk for the Packers. You're not spending a ton of money on this guy. He has big play potential. Cause if you look at his footage from out in Carolina, when he was playing with a quarterback, like Cam Newton, imagine what he can do with a guy like Aaron Rodgers. He doesn't have to be like that tier one type of receiver that everybody wants to go out there and grab like an Odell Beckham or Antonio Brown, but he has the potential to show flashes of what a tier one wide receiver can be. He has experience. And uh, like I said, it's just, why not? Why not sign this guy? Let's see if he can come back and have himself an outstanding season. We were hurting at wide receiver desperately and poorly and majorly, whatever word you want to use to describe our wide receiver group last year. But I like the signing of Devin Funches. I'm not entirely sure they are done in free agency at wide receiver. But they, uh, you look at the rest of their wide receiving group, you have Devonta Adams, of course. Alan Lazard will probably continue to uh, peak or grow on his journey as a wide receiver. Darius Shepard still hanging around. Uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling still sticking around. Equinamius St. Brown, who, remember, went to injured reserve at the very early part of last year. Uh, last season uh, missed the entire season he will be coming back and he is still around the Packers roster Jake Kumaro Malik Taylor and then there's this guy by the name of Reggie Begleton and uh, this is someone that I am very excited to see what can come out of him in OTAs and spring training and uh, the heading into the NFL season this was a a type of player that had a lot of attention he uh, playing in the Canadian Football League he came uh, he played there last season he played there I think the last couple seasons um Potentially a really strong wide receiver candidate that we were able to, you know, kind of give him his first shot in the NFL. I definitely need to see more footage of him. I definitely need to see more, I guess, NFL type of uh, drills and, and experience out of this guy. But I think there's a lot of upside and you're not paying him a lot of money either. So let's talk about the draft, right? I mean, we're heading into it next week and potential draft odds of taking a wide receiver. 100%. Just like the offensive line, we are going to be walking away from next weekend with at least one more lineman on our roster and one more wide receiver on our roster and potentially even two wide receivers, quite frankly, on our roster, just depending on how everything shakes out. I mean, I don't think that the Packers have to take a wide receiver at the number one pick. Now, if, if they are going to take a number one pick, and the only way that I think that they should take a wide receiver at number one is if a guy like T. Higgins from Clemson is still available on the board late in the first round, that would be an absolute monster of a signing or a draft pick that the Packers could use their uh, their first round pick. But if, if the, a guy like him and a lot of your you're hot. I mean, they're, they're looking at about five or six really positive or solid wide receivers coming into this draft. If all those guys are gone, I think that the Packers either A, take an offensive lineman in the first round, or B, they trade out of the first round and kind of see what they can do in that second round to, to add depth to both of those positions. Uh, again, don't. It, I'm going to give you a little bit of a preface, but don't be upset if the Packers do not take a wide receiver right away in that first round. You look at their last... You know, a guy like Devonta Adams, back in 14, he was drafted in the second round. Randall Cobb, 2011, drafted in the second round. Jordy Nelson, 2008, drafted in the second round. James Jones, drafted in 2007, drafted in the third round. And then you have Greg Jennings back in 2006, also drafted 
in the second round. So uh, I think the last wide receiver the Packers took at the in the first round was way back in the early 2000s. We're talking about Javon Walker was a guy that the Packers took that early first round pick on. And I don't like that. Obviously, I mean, it, it maybe had some flashes, but it did not go nearly as well or as, as planned as good old Ted Thompson would have liked back then. Um, so again, don't we, the Packers don't need to take a wide receiver. That is definitely a major need for them. And they need to add more passing weapons um, to their uh, offense and for Aaron Rodgers, but I don't think that they will take it. And then outside of just potential draft players, there are rumors kind of like with OJ Howard and, and being a tight end coming to green Bay. We look at a guy like Ty Hilton or T Y Hilton um, with the Indianapolis Colts. There are some trade rumors going on there as well that the Packers could be interested in bringing in a guy like that. I think bringing in some, a veteran receiver really eliminates the need to waste a first or second round wide receiver potentially and you can maybe wait to the late second round or early third round to pick up a wide receiver but there's a, i i don't get into the mock drafts I, I like i i i just avoid it every year every single i mean I, last season is so fresh in my mind i mean i just started this podcast it's those are some of my first videos and the draft board just kind of unfolds and the Packers end up taking a guy like Rashawn Gary or Darnell Savage. And I, like, maybe I'd heard of some of them, but it's like, I don't know who these guys are and I'm never going to predict it. It's just, let's see how the cards fall. I'm going to trust in Brian Gutekunst. I'm going to trust in Matt LaFleur. I'm going to trust in uh, the entire organization to do what's right for the team. I'm not going to even begin to dabble in what who and when where and why so that's going to do it for the offensive side of our preview heading into next weekend's draft as i mentioned before i'm going to do a defensive focus video that should post on monday and guys it feels good to be back it's kind of like taking the training wheels off of this bike getting down here and recording a video and drinking a beer and and talking to myself while staring into a camera but it's really fun to be back i look forward to seeing some comments hearing from you guys out there Always a good time, uh, and the season is just starting to kind of get uh, boiling, if you will. I will post some content over the next week and a half, two weeks here. We'll see how it goes. Obviously, my studio is not completely ready, and my intro video is not completely ready. So we're going to work on that as well as we move forward. So until next time, I will see you on the Internet. Thanks for watching. <laughs>